Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 7, Part 2. We are going to add some machined surfaces, cuts, to our model. And we're going to start off by taking our bottom datum here, down the front datum, and we're going to offset a datum from it. So select datum and it's going to be offset point 1 now I did this a little bit different in the book but I want to use the datum plane method so I'm going to use that my for my sketcher my sketch plane I'm going to go to extrude and remove material Copies and define, and we are going to use that datum plane. We could use the bottom surface here. And sketch, and so. Now, if I wanted to, I could clip the model right at that position to look at it. That's a new feature for Creo 4.0. It's not available before. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice off the bottom here. And I can use a variety of methods. In the book, I had you cut it with a line that goes all the way across. In this case here, we're going to use references. And I'm going to select this and this as a reference. Close. And I go back into my 2D and go back into my cut. And basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of circles. And you can see there's no dimensions because they're locked in with the reference. Check. Rotate my part. You can see it's been sliced. You would use this three all through all. And check. So that's one method. I'm going to undo that one. And I'm going to use the methods in the book. So you can see the difference between the two. All right, and in this particular case, I do not need the datum also, so I'm going to delete that one. So this time, though, I'm going to come up, extrude, remove material. I'm going to select the datum plane, this one here. And I can clip that one, too, to see what it looks like. That's just a viewing mechanism, no, nothing else. Now, I do have all rounded features, and it is slowing down my system. There's a variety of things we can do about that, but we'll leave it for now. One of the things here is I'm going to turn off all my datum features and right mouse button references. I'm going to pick the two outside surfaces here as references. And I'm going to draw a line connecting. I'm going to try make sure I don't come down here and pick the round tangency. I'm going to come over and all the way to the other end. Middle mouse button. And this one is point 0.1. Check. Change my arrow. And I want to go through all on both sides. So this is my second method. This one did not require a datum plane. So the next one is I'm going to offset a datum plane, but I'm going to create one first. So what I want to do is I want to turn back my datum features back on. Take a look at this. You can see my datum plane for front down here is very just below the surface. 
This time I want to create a datum plane through the bottom cut. I don't want it to be offset. I want it to always be through. Okay. And right mouse button, I'm going to go into properties and I'm going to make this one datum A. And datum B, while I'm at it, will be the top. And datum C. And then I'm going to turn off everything except for my axes. And you can see now that we have my our datum A, B, and C. Now, what we've done is we've created a datum through the bottom machine surface. Now, I want to have a dimension available to show the height of this after it's cut, not the depth of the cut from the top of face down. So I'm going to offset a datum again. And I'm going to go to 1 point, 1.55. And that's this dimension right here for the height of the large boss here. OK. And it's not showing because I turned off my datums, and that is not a set datum. So I'm going to turn this one back on. Click on Extrude, right mouse button, remove material. I'm going to go into my right mouse button, define internal sketch. I'm going to use that datum plane, the new one, sketch. My references, this round here, zoom up. And then I'm going to put a circle in. And the circle is going to start here, and it's going to be locked into the reference. You can see no dimensions. Right mouse button check. There's my cut. I'm just going to go through all in this case. And I have my second cut. Got one more to do over here. And we'll use another method for this one. Turn off data planes. Don't need it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click extrude, remove material. And I'm going to select this bottom face here. And as far as my references, I'm going to use this as a reference. And we're going to put a circle in this one also. It's on the bottom not on the top surface here. I complete the sketch. And we can see that's what we get. But we're going to go over to the options, and we're going to select this option. And we will make it point seven two five, And make this one through all. See what happens here. I need to put in a negative. So it goes in the other direction. So I'm offsetting the section right inside the command to the depth that I want. And this one is point seven two five middle mouse button I'm done 
Now what this allows me is a dimension right here, and that's going to be the design dimension. And this is going to be the design dimension when I display it on a drawing. So these are the dimensions that actually are used for creating and establishing these cut surfaces. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to add a couple of holes. So I'm going to click on the hole tool, come over and select the axes, hold my control key down and pick this surface for a starting surface. And I want it to be all the way through. And we want to have 0.5625. I'm not sure if that's correct. 0.5375. So have our hole, middle mouse button to finish it. It's still selected, and I'm going to control C, control V for paste. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to select my axes, hold down my control key, pick the face to start on. Still is going to be all the way through. Now the difference here is I want this to be a threaded hole, and it's a half an inch. And we're going to put a chamfer on it, countersink. And we want it to be through all. We also want to have an exit countersink. And then we can go change these numbers. I'm just going to get close. We want a through thread. And we get a preview over there. And we have our hole. So copy and pasting a hole. And we'll go up to our analysis and measure. And we get this little we're going to pick distance from our menu here. And for instance, let's pick the top face, right mouse button, bottom face. I need to hold my control key. There's my distance. And on this side here, point seven two five for that diameter. And it gives me my diameters. So we've completed the machined portion of the component. So we modeled it with all of its rounds and its casting surfaces, and then we cut that off. This will allow us, if we ever put these models together, uh, the instances of these models, to do some pro manufacturing. And that's where we can actually machine the part on the screen, removing material, adding holes, etc. This completes part two, lesson seven.